Ooh, those are pretty flowers. Hi, they Maria. Are. Hi. What are you working on? Well, I'm working on gathering a few specimen to put in my plant press today. And that's what we're going to talk about. We're going to learn how to make a plant press. We're going to talk about what flowers and plants are best suited or not Correct. for putting into a plant press and some of the projects that we can do with them after they've been dried and flattened. And we're with Maria Peacock, who's the Interpretive Services Manager at St. Joseph County Parks. And you've got some beautiful uh, fruit blossoms. That I might do. be something that would be in somebody's yard. Even, Absolutely. Right? Springtime, perfect time to find some really pretty blossoms like this, some okay. little flowers. So we're going to collect a few things and then go check out the plant presses, Yes, right? we are. Okay, well let's see what we can find. I bet okay. there's like things that people could find in their lawn even, right? Well, and ideally you're kind of looking for smaller specimen anyway. You don't want big succulent plants because they're not going to press very well. Okay. So plants that are a little bit flatter by nature are going to work out better in the end when you press them. And sometimes really tiny petite right. things work and well. Like these little guys right here. It's oh, a type of cute. ground cover, but they're pretty little kind of bell flower. Yeah. Those would work perfect. Wonderful. So okay. smaller is sometimes better, even, you know, we have a lot of dandelions mm -hmm. in the yards right now and people right. might be looking at ways to get rid of those. But again, the base of that's kind of big um, and thick for putting in a press. So right. you could lay it out flat and it, it would work okay, but not as great as some other ones. Okay, so. gotcha. Now I noticed um, right here overhead, there's some really pretty burgundy leaves on an ornamental plant. Right, and would, those, those those would be work? good. Those okay. would be good. So maybe we could grab, a couple, grab a couple of those. Grab a couple of those. Yeah. And you know, as you're picking these, you probably want to think about what the purpose is going to be once you've pressed your flowers. Mm. Are you going to maybe make a, a pretty arrangement on a bookmark or, you know, some kind of collage or picture? Or are you doing it just for natural history knowledge? So it's going to vary what your end result is going to be of why you're collecting the different specimen that you are. Okay, that's a good point. All right. So I love the color of that. Those though. are very that's pretty. That's great. Okay. Yeah. I think we have enough to get started. Absolutely. Don't you? Yeah. Let's go over to the picnic table then. Okay. You've got a nice little collection of plant presses, but they all do about the same thing, they right? They do. They do. And so what are the basic components of a press? Okay. Well, pretty much speaking, you want to have your wood pieces for your bottom and your top. Uh-huh. And then in between, you want to have um, pieces of cardboard, corrugated okay. cardboard. Uh-huh. Um, it helps aerate the leaves. And then the blotter in between is going to be newspaper um, is the easiest thing to use for that. And, and plant presses go way back. I mean, these have been right. used for centuries for collecting plants for specimens to identify them, right? Absolutely. John Muir, as he did his travels, he was definitely into collecting plants as he went along the way and kept small, little bound, you know, kind of similar type with a little piece of wood that was mm -hmm. just bound by um, something like material like this, some cordage. Lewis and Clark on their expedition, that was one of the main purposes of their journey was to collect all the different plant specimens that they could yeah, along the way. Right. So, and of course, they made um, herbarium specimens similar to this. I mean, Correct. this is a contemporary one, but press the plant, put some information about where it was found, Correct. when it was found, and then it was sent to a collection like the Smithsonian for mm -hmm. cataloging. Absolutely. And those, you know, the specimen, if they're prepared um, correctly, can last hundreds of years. Wow. So. And why don't we press, can we press some of the we things sure that can. we collected here so we can see what that's like? I've got that pretty little. Okay. And then also blossom. as we're kind of taking this apart, you can see that there's the bolts through here. Yep. And then ideally you like to have a washer and a wing nut. Um, those are the easiest things to take on and off. So as you're pressing your plants, as they begin to dry, you can tighten them down more ah, and more okay. as a, the process continues. Right. So what I'll do is you'll have a piece of the corrugated cardboard, mm -hmm. and then this actually has um, some blotter sheets with it, but I also use some newspaper as well. Oh, okay. And if you just cut it along the fold, it makes it a little bit easier to... Oh, like open it up. Yep. And then you lay your flower in there however you whoops, want whoops, the, the whoops, end product to be. You have to think about that. Oh, right. So you, you want to take a bit of time doing this, realizing that they are delicate. They do move around a bit. Now, it's going to take um, at least 10 days to two weeks for the, the specimen to really dry um, to their fullest extent. Now, if you're doing things like these flowers, often what I find is that I might come back after a day, take a look at them, knowing they're not totally dry, but kind of rearrange them a little bit because the, the ah. leaves are still going to be um, a bit damp. And so you have a little bit of wiggle room, so mm -hmm. to speak, with kind of rearranging them if they're not exactly how you want them. Okay. And so you put that in. And then if you've got a little blotter, like I said, you can put that over, but not necessary. But 
you do want the cardboard because that does allow the aeration to go oh, through so it helps flow. dry okay and then the newspaper just acts as wicking away the moisture so you might want to replace that out depending on what it is that you're pressing if it's something a little bit more succulent a little bit more damp mm -hmm. you might change out that newspaper so it can dry so it can dry better now we'll have plans on how to make a plant press on the outdoor elements website but I've pressed plants even in when, in the old days when we had big phone books or heavy books and Headlocks, you've yes. done the same, right? And I do. And this one actually, um, I had forgotten that I had had some things in it. Oh, look at that, a sweet gum And leaf. I've got a sweet gum that's been yeah. in here for a long time now. Yeah. Obviously not uh, pressed to the the uh, the speculation of when you do want to press out things yeah. for longevity. But, but it works. It's still got a good color and it's probably been in here, I would say, at least five years. Wow. Okay. So right. okay. So that that's that's an option for folks. And there are right. lots of fun things that people can do with their dry um, specimens once they're finished. You've got some um, a couple of bookmarks, mm -hmm. which are lovely little gifts for folks. Sure. Note cards. Hmm. This is actually handmade paper. Re recycled right? paper that had pressed plants that were then put into it as Very it was cute. made. And you were just talking about the color. This is a, a silver maple leaf. Mm -hmm. And about how old is that leaf? I want to say that's probably at least seven years old. Wow. And the color is great. The color is good. And uh, kind of a key to that too is that when you're pressing leaves, flowers, and if it's, it's got a really um, vibrant color that you want to retain, press it immediately. Okay. You want to take it right in to wherever you're, mm -hmm. whether it's going into a book because you don't have your press ready, that's fine, yep. but put it in the pressing process right away and that will help retain the color. Excellent. And also making sure that it stays dry. Whatever you store it in is in a dry, aerated place. It makes a difference as so well. So it doesn't get wet again. Okay. Correct. And I love this little this little candle holder where you've um, sort of decoupaged some leaves. Right. Over. So when a, a little tea light's put in there, you can't see it right now um, in the daylight. It's a little bit harder, but the leaf, um, it kind of has a nice little ghost shape to it yeah, and, and those were done by by children so it's an easy ah. craft project to do and then even just there's some really neat books you can buy that talk about just the different shapes that leaves are naturally and what you can make out of that be it different animals or you know oh, some yeah. little collage Fun, yeah you can do lots of different things with it wonderful well it's certainly a great project for spring but actually all year fall fall Absolutely. leaves as well so Absolutely. again we'll have the information on how to make your own plant press on the outdoor elements website but maria thanks so much this is a great thanks family project me. Yes, thank Thanks. you. Coming up, freshwater crayfish are unique creatures with adaptations that make them well suited for aquatic habitats. Next, we meet the clever crayfish. Like outdoor elements? Then like us on Facebook. It's your chance to keep up on what's airing on this week's Outdoor Elements. See behind the scenes pictures and videos. Be sure to check out the galleries. We also want to hear from you. Let us know what you think about the show and some of the great outdoor elements that you are experiencing. So search Outdoor Elements on Facebook or connect via WNIT.org backslash Outdoor Elements. And be sure to click like 